Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Bernard Hopkins recently beat Babu Chumanov. It was a unification match at 175 pounds, light heavyweight. And afterwards, he, in an interview, said that he felt the best fighter pound for pound in the world is Floyd Mayweather. He said the second best fighter pound for pound in the world is Andre Ward. He said that he deserved the third spot behind Mayweather and war. Right now, let me just say, you know, I know the press has favorites. I know the networks have favorites. But really, the real referees of the sport, in terms of deciding who's the best pound for pound, who's second best, who belongs on the list, is actually people like you and me, the fans, right? We're the ones who really have the power. For example, I don't believe Andre Ward has had high-profile fights in Las Vegas, right? Andre Ward fights a lot in California, but yet nationally, we know from looking at Andre Ward fights, that he's one of the very best pound for pound in the sport, right? Other fighters have fought in higher profile pay-per-view events, right? Manny Pacquiao, for example. But I would argue that most boxing fans understand that Andre Ward has certain skills that other more popular fighters, including Manny Pacquiao, doesn't have. I also think too that of course the playing field is always tipped in favor of vets and it always gives short shrift to lesser known fighters who might have big time game but who for whatever reason haven't had the big time exposure and might not be as old or as well connected in the sport as some of the other guys. Right? You know the names of the powers that be in boxing. I'm not going to name any of them here, but you know the big promotional companies. You know the big time managers. You'll often hear a fighter after a match say, I'd like to thank so and so. Right? Well connected fighters get the well connected fights. But we as boxing fans know better. So, let me just share my list of the guys who I believe right now or on the short list of being the best pound for pound in boxing but let me go one step further and let me name some boxers who I feel would give them a hard time because understand boxing's rock paper scissors at the end of the day styles make fights right so you can be the best in boxing pound for pound but certain guys in your own division might have styles that could give you problems. So, as of today, April 23rd, 2014, and understand these lists change over time based on what guys do. Not just the guys on the list, but other guys. We might surpass them, right, with stellar performances. As of April 23rd, 2014, let me talk about my list of guys who are on the short list of the best pound for pound and guys who will give them a hard time. To me the top shelf of the sport. A guy who really is an all-time great when you talk about him defensively very few peers, right? You have to talk about guys like Pernell Whitaker, right? When you talk about the Ray Robinsons of the world, you do have to ask yourself, how would Ray Robinson do against Floyd Mayweather? 
right? Because the one thing we know is that Mayweather had better defense than Sugar Ray Robinson. Let's get real, right? Uh, we know Robinson was an explosive puncher, but Robinson did have some close matches. Robinson did get beaten, right? I would say the top shelf of the sport is Floyd Mayweather. I would say, though, that guys like Amir Khan, who has faster hands than Floyd, who at this point might have faster feet than Floyd, I would say Sean Porter, a guy who started his career at 165, is coming down to 147, right? Beat up Devin Alexander, destroyed Pauli Malignaggi, can fight inside, unlike many Mayweather opponents, is shorter than Mayweather, might be able to, you know, get up closer to Mayweather than most. I'd say Sean Porter gives him a hard time. And I do believe Cal Brook, who has great legs, would be able to be outside. He's big for 147 pounds, right? Hits hard. I believe Kel Brook would give Mayweather a hard time. I'm not saying Mayweather necessarily loses these fights. I'm just saying it's a hard time. If you jump up to 154 where Mayweather has a title right now, of all the guys at 154, I would say Eris Landy Lara. Slick boxer like Mayweather, accustomed to fighting bigger guys than Mayweather, would likely outweigh Mayweather by a lot of pounds. At the time of the fight, I believe Eris Landy Lara would give Mayweather a hard time. Right, I'd say the second best, pound for pound, Andre Ward. Ward is stellar. I'd like to see Ward fight James DeGale. I think that fight would be out of the box. Ward's been fighting guys, and granted, they're the best in his weight class. He was in that Super 6, that Showtime Super 6, but he's been fighting guys who have some flaws, right? Arthur Abraham has lost since that Super 6 tournament. Arthur Abraham at times looks a bit slow, right? Paul Frotch. Looks a bit slow. Right? You, you're seeing that when Carl Frotch fought George Groves. Right? We saw Chad Dawson, quite frankly, after he fought Ward, get destroyed by Adonis Stevenson. The question is whether James DeGale, who has not been knocked out, whose only loss was a photo finish to George Groves, Right? The question is whether DeGale would have a different dynamic, a different sense of timing that might actually throw Andre Ward off. Understand, guys have been giving rounds against Ward. Right? Paul Frotch went the distance against Andre Ward. Andre Ward doesn't close the show that often. You get the feeling a fight against James DeGale might linger a few rounds, right? When is the last time you saw James DeGale strategically outboxed in a match, right? I think that's an interesting fight. Now, with all due respect to Bernard Hopkins, and I think Hopkins arguably has had one of the greatest careers in the history of the sport. You heard me when I first came on YouTube years ago refer to Bernard Hopkins as one of the very best champions at middleweight in the history of the sport. But Bernard throwing less than 400 punches in his last fight, right? Bernard pacing himself in matches, in my opinion, doesn't give him the edge on a pound-for-pound -pound list over a guy who right now, in my opinion, is putting himself on the Mount Rushmore of great middleweight champions. I like Sergio Martinez. What exactly is he going to have to do to be widely received as a member of the very best in the sport pound-for-pound? -pound? This is a guy who took Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s 
unbeaten streak. Right? This is a guy who took Darren Barker's unbeaten streak. This is a guy who took Sergio Zinzurich's, Sergio Zinzurich's unbeaten streak. This is a guy who's already beaten Paul Williams and Matthew Macklin. Next on his dance guard is Miguel Cotto. Right? And so, <laughs> my point to you is simply, this guy is fighting difficult matchups. And he's having his way. Right? Then he beat Kelly Pavlik. Now I'll concede. There's an issue concerning health right now. Right? Sergio Martinez himself talks about how he had knee problems, he had surgery, he's had shoulder problems or something like that. The question is whether Sergio Martinez is still Sergio Martinez. But the one thing I know is that until someone proves that he isn't, he's on this pound for pound list. The person who would give him a hard time is also on this pound for pound list. I believe that's Janady Golovkin. Right? A guy in his prime who's knocking everyone out ends up on my list ahead of Bernard Hopkins. Right? Just food for thought. Right? With regard to Janady Golovkin, style-wise, I do believe Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is going to give him a hard time. Why? Because Golovkin likes to walk you down. Right? He's playing defense, he's playing defense, then he starts to come forward. What happens if the other guy's bigger than him comes forward and has a punch? Let's remember, Chavez Jr. destroyed Andy Lee. Right? I'm looking forward to that fight. I'm not putting Chavez Jr. on the pound for pound list. Right? But I'm saying style-wise, he would give Golovkin a hard time. Let me name a few other names that belong on this list. You know, Miguel Vasquez has been champ for a while, folks. You're not going to find a better jab, in my opinion, in terms of timing and how it sets up the rest of his game. Right? I believe this guy would beat many of the bigger names in the sport. He is the lightweight champion. He hasn't lost for a long time. Right? Look it up. He fought Canelo twice. Right? Twice. Right? He did lose to Timothy Bradley years ago. Who knows what would happen now? I think Miguel Vasquez is on the pound for pound list. Let me say I believe Terrence Crawford would be a big test for him. Maybe Crawford belongs on this list, but he's going to have to do more than just beat Ricky Burns. Right? Clearly, Bernard Hopkins is on this list, right? Hopkins has been on the list for a very long time. Understand, <laughs> Hopkins' idea of a second career is to fight current and former champions who are much younger than him, right? Tavares Cloud, Chad Dawson, Babu Chumanoff, right? And to literally collect titles. There's no special category for Bernard Hawkins. It's not like he's getting special consideration for age. We're talking about what he actually is doing in the ring. He fights Babu Chumanoff, a guy with a punch, and he's the one who scores the only knockdown in the fight. Right? So I'll give Hopkins credit. He belongs on the list. I believe Sir Jack Kovalev would give him some problems. As I said before, Hopkins needs to pace himself. His last fight, he threw less than 400 total punches. Guillermo de Gundia is one of the best defensive fighters in the sport. Right? That Namito Denaire fight, that's a masterpiece. It's so dominant a performance that Denaire used to be on this list. Now no one mentions him on this list. Right? Let me name another name who belongs on this list. Because he's in Guillermo de Gundio's division and he's also, in my opinion, among the best pound for pound. Leo Santa Cruz. He's making a name for himself. 
Santa Cruz and Regundio are kind of opposites. Santa Cruz is all offense. Regundio has a lot of defense, right? A match between the two of them would be one hell of a match. Leo Santa Cruz belongs on this list. Let me say too, Mikey Garcia. Wow, he's been destroying guys, hasn't he? I believe Mikey Garcia belongs on this list. Look at his body of work. I'll agree, Mikey's been hit hard in some fights. But look at his body of work. The kind of fighter who I believe would give him a hard time. And I said this before Mikey beat the guy, but I still believe it. Because the win was of the broken nose variety, right, is Orlando Salido. Right? I believe Salido is a difficult matchup. I still believe Salido, as well known as he is, is one of the more underrated fighters in the sport. Right? He just beat Lomachenko. He's still an elite fighter. Put me among those who'd love to see the Mikey Garcia Orlando Salido rematch. So those are the guys who I have on my list, but understand, even the guys on the pound-for-pound pound list, style-wise, face big challenges within their own divisions, right? I mean, Floyd Mayweather, Eris Landy Lara, people watching this video, can you say with certainty that Lara, who has fought some guys with punches, right, who fought Paul Williams, guys with heavy volume, right, who's fought slicksters, that Carlos Molina, Arislandi Lara fight really is a classic and it's a draw. Can you really say that Arislandi Lara loses to Floyd Mayweather? I think it's open for debate. Understand, I know many people are going to say that's not Floyd's real division. I'll tell you what, any division in which you have a title in which you're a current belt holder is your division right I think they're questions right Andre Ward James DeGale I'll tell you what if Andre Ward gets inside on James DeGale like he got inside on Carl Frotch and Alan Green he's gonna find that James DeGale is at home that'll be a great moment in boxing seeing what happens in that fight right let's also say too Sergio Martinez let's face it he hits harder than advertised right if you don't believe that just watch the end of the Darren Barker fight if you don't believe that just watch the end of the Matthew Macklin fight guys these are warriors going down right now Golovkin I wonder whether Golovkin finds Martinez in the ring. And if he finds Martinez, what happens when he starts getting hit with shots? Didn't he have a problem against Kasim Uma? Right? So I do wonder what happens there. Right? Also, a Santa Cruz Regundio fight. Does Santa Cruz land on Regundio? Is Regundio able to get through the firestorm to actually land counters? Or does he get overwhelmed by the young juggernaut? Right, let me say this too. Miguel Vasquez, Terrence Crawford. You know, the more I look at Crawford, the more he looks like Pernell Whitaker. I'd love to know what happens when Vasquez gets that jab pumping. Does it land? Can Crawford close the distance and counter? Right? What happens if that fight actually becomes low volume? Who has the upper hand? Also, aren't there different rooms to the building known as Miguel Vasquez? Right? I've seen Vasquez fights where Vasquez decides to throw hooks instead of jabs and actually stops being the puppet, his nickname, and starts anchoring his punches, right? So, let me just say, boxing's a competitive sport. 
It's rock, paper, scissors. Several guys deserve to be on the pound for pound list. I believe Floyd, Andre, Martinez, Golovkin, Redundio, Leo Santa Cruz, Miguel Vasquez, Mikey Garcia, Bernard Hopkins all deserve to be there. But wow, each of them have competitive opponents. Right? And the one thing I do know in boxing is that this book keeps getting rewritten fight after fight. Let me hear from you. Who have I left out? I know a bunch of you are going to say, what about Manny Pacquiao? Right? Some of you might talk about other people. They might say, look, Sean Porter is unbeaten. You mention him as a viable opponent for Floyd Mayweather. Why isn't he on the list? Understand, everyone on this list, in my opinion, has a nice resume right now. I'm not speculating on what Floyd Mayweather can accomplish, right? The list is really for what he has accomplished and where he is today, right? So if you're going to put somebody on the list, what I want you to do in the comment section to this video is to also tell us why he belongs on the list. I believe James DeGale, privately, I believe James DeGale is among the most talented fighters in boxing. Unfortunately for James DeGale, he wasn't in the Showtime Super 6 tournament. Right? I haven't seen James DeGale against people like Carl Froch. I have seen Andre Ward. Right? And so, you know, and Carl Froch. I understand Carl Froch, and let's give it to Carl Froch, has taken on all comers. Right? I don't have to imagine what Carl will do against Andre Ward in the United States because Carl came to the United States. He not only fought Ward, he fought Jermaine Taylor. Fair enough. He fought Miguel Kessler more than once. Fair enough. Right? He's fought George Groves. Fair enough. Right? The problem, though, is Frotch lost to Andre Ward. Frotch got dropped in the first George Groves fight. Had to get back up, and it wasn't a flash knockdown. So, yeah, I agree. This current list has some hard decisions behind it. Let me say this, too. I've left off all heavyweights. I love Vladimir Klitschko. He's a champion. He doesn't go to the body. Right? His inside game to me is lacking. When a guy bum rushes him, he seems to clinch a lot. Right? I personally feel, I know this next line is controversial, I feel Tyson Fury has more talent than Vladimir Klitschko. The problem with Tyson Fury, though, is Tyson Fury hasn't fought a Klitschko. Right? And Tyson Fury... Mentally, in some fights, you know, the Steve Cunningham fight, shows up a bit unprepared, gets dropped. I understand Tyson Fury is uh, looking forward to a rematch against uh, Derek Chisora, and I don't blame him for not fighting a lot of quality guys, because people like David Haight did pull out, right? The problem, though, is Tyson Fury hasn't fought enough quality guys for me to include him on this list, and in some fights... He has had very tough moments, right? As I said before, he was on his back against Steve Cunningham. So there's some guys who are among the best talents in the sport. But they haven't accomplished enough, in my opinion, to be on this list. Anyway, let me hear from you. Let me hear your list. Let's start the discussion. Fighters can't simply show up at a press conference and appoint themselves the best pound for pound. That's not the way the list works. It has to be done with the fans' agreement. Let me hear your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.